Okay, I'm going to review the Retron 5 updated with recent updates. A lot of the uh, old reviews include outdated uh, stuff, uh, st you know, include the problems that it had prior to updates that have happened recently. Okay, so now I've had this thing for months now. Um, and uh, I'm going to point out some of the problems that are uh, popular in reviews that basically came out right when the console came out. <laughs> so they reviewed it right away before this console was updated. This console can receive updates. So the SD card slot in the back through a very obnoxious method, but it works. So that hasn't changed. Now anything that is related to hardware cannot be updated, of course. Now I'm trying to put the SD card back in the back. Okay, so problems that have been fixed are things like the, well recently there was a patch released uh, that, that fixes the problem where you have to hold the button, the power button, for like five seconds to turn the power uh, on. This one allows you to basically, it's like one second now, cuts it down really well. It's called the fast boot patch. It will cut it down to like one second of holding the button and then it boots right up. So that was fixed. Uh, there's some things where like, you know, the cartridges unfortunately are being dumped into the memory. The ROMs are being dumped into the memory. That can take a little while. There has been a beta update uh, recently, which I have installed on here. It works fairly well. It only works with Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance is the biggest defender of having to load ROMs for eternity. Um, what this patch does is basically it dumps a portion of the ROM, enough to play the ROM, so you can start it basically right away, and then while you're playing, it'll dump the rest of the ROM. So it, it loads it to a playable fashion, like right away, and then just while you're playing it, it'll dump the rest of the ROM instead of having to wait for the entire ROM to dump, and then you can play it. So they fixed that issue. Um, some other things. Uh, some compatibility has been updated, so, you know, a lot of times they point out the lock-on carts. That was fixed a while ago. Lock-on carts work since quite some time ago. Um, there's other, other issues that people have had with software um, on the software side of things. Like I said, the updates are still tedious. Um, it, it, updates aren't going to fix the cart slots being... Uh, tight. The only thing that fixes the card slots being tight is putting the um, card in and pulling it out. They're still a little tight, especially the Genesis stays tight, um, stuff like that. But um, carts, because the card slots are like they're a different size than the original. So, like, if I put a Sega Genesis card in here, this was made to also accept Mega Drive cards and everything else. And this is a little bigger than the usual Sega Genesis slot, so when you put it in, it has trouble lining up. And it, I wish it would be like some kind of maybe like a slider or something. So if you're gonna put in a Sega Genesis cart, you you put you know, like you slide over, and then it's set to fit. Like maybe there would be some kind of thing that comes in like this, and it would be set to fit a Sega Genesis cart. So when you want to play a Mega Drive cart, you slide it out. Whatever, I don't know, something to stop you from being afraid of breaking the pins, which is a problem. Um, the controller still sucks. It's still a big fat piece of shit. Um, one thing that has been fixed through updates is the mode button is supported now, and you can map uh, start and select. So, you know, you can use a, Super, uh, a Sega Genesis controller with Nintendo games now. So, before, because you couldn't map select, uh, you couldn't actually use this. You'd either need another controller laying around, you'd need this, and use the select button on this, or you just couldn't use this controller. But now I've actually been able to map select in Nintendo games to the mode button. So this is what I use. I would never use this. <laughs> um, this is not very good. It, it works for some games, but there's a lot of games. There's too, too many games that this just won't cut it for for me and it's very uncomfortable to use so what I did was I just got this and I got a really long ass extension cable for it 
so that I can lean back on my couch and play. So, so there's that. Yep, it's true. This thing is still a piece of shit. Um, so, things that they have fixed outside of that, uh, you know, like, you know, I said lock-on carts work, right? Yeah. So, you know, they've fixed a lot of compatibility issues. They haven't fixed their, all the compatibility issues, so that's not quite there. Um, what they fixed recently? They did a recent fix of something, I think. I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, something now works properly. Oh, copying uh, saves back to your carts. Now, at least for me, seems to work properly. Before The Legend of Zelda, the first Zelda on NES, I could not copy my saves to the cart. It would just delete all the saves, and that was that. Now it copies it fine to the cart, so that's really cool. That's a huge plus because, um, say, there's a many situations where that could be really cool. Um, I wish those saves would work in my emulators, but they don't, um, unfortunately. That would be awesome. Um, like my, my uh, NVIDIA Shield tablet or my NVIDIA Shield portable um, in RetroArch or something, but they don't, unfortunately. However, outside of that, it allows you to be able to transfer saves between carts. So if you have, say, a cart and you have your save on it, and maybe you wanted to, maybe you, you wanted a better cart. Maybe your cart is all, you know, maybe you have cracks in it, or you just want a better cart, but you want to keep your saves. You can actually take that save from your old cart and transfer it onto a new cart and then continue where you left off. Or, say you were going to change the battery in the actual cart itself, because um, those things can be changed. They're a little rough. You have to, do, you know, I think you need soldering knowledge and stuff like that, but. Um, you can change the battery and transfer the same from the old battery to the new battery. So if the battery died or whatever, you can do that. Or if you just want to upgrade it to make sure that it doesn't die or whatever, <laughs> you can transfer those saves and that's cool. I would hope that somehow that you could use them in an emulator though with like regular just ROMs. Um, you still can't use like uh, flash carts, whatever. You can't like grab a, a, one of those, uh, what do you call it, Genesis flashcards or whatever the hell, put an SD card with ROMs in it. Um, again, I would really say if you're looking to play ROMs, get an OUYA. Um, that does it perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so just get that. It, it's fine with that. You also get the, uh, you get that nice little front-end uh, nostalgia app that, that works really well. Um, Let's see. I mean, you don't get the audio enhancements. I like the audio enhancements. Uh, so, for the most part, it seems like that. Uh, I've not had any big issues with the console. Nothing has become defective. Nothing stopped working. I've taken this with me to a friend's house in a bag. Um, hooked it up at his house. We played... I've done that like twice so far. And more than likely, quite a few more times will happen. But, you know, I've taken it to his house, played it on his HDTV, packed it up, brought it back, you know, back and forth. It's a little bit of a ride to his house. So it's been fine through that and hooking it up and, and you know. So it's traveled a bit. It traveled here to my house. It traveled, I'm sure, to uh, the person's house who I bought it from. It traveled to the whoever, you know, from Hyperkins, whatever. It's traveled a lot. And it's fine. So, controller, even though it feels very cheap, it has not. Nothing has happened to it, although I haven't used it that much. I used it at my friend's house because I didn't have another controller. It was alright for that, I guess. Yeah, it kind of worked. What did we play? We played uh, NHL hockey uh, on the Sega Genesis. Uh, no, NHL PA hockey. I think that's what it's called on the Sega Genesis. And we played a few other games. And actually, it didn't work so bad with it. Um, I forget what we played, though. We played Golden Axe uh, 2. Golden Axe 2. A few other things. And I used this. And this, this, like I said, it works for some things, but there's some things that don't support diagonals that it really causes problems with. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, let's see. 
So they got the fast food patch so far. They got they've been given some good support for it. Um, I was worried that they were going to just drop it because I'm so used to getting a device. Um, the people who made it just stop support for it completely, like in no time flat. Like the JXD devices, they drop support for those things, like boom. And the only people that support them are the hacker, <laughs> the uh, the community of hackers on the, the Dingu websites or whatever. Um, but this has received some decent support. It doesn't get it updates like every five seconds, but it has had a, uh, it keeps getting updated. And recently, like I said, they've released like three different updates for it. Uh, they released the regular update, which, uh, what did that do? Oh, that fixed the save state thing. Uh, or not the save states, the, uh, the actual saves from the card. It fixed, uh, transferring the saves. It fixed, uh... Did a couple of things. I think they fixed some little issues with games. Um, and some other stuff. You can look it on the website. But then they released the beta update, which included the fast loading of uh, Genesis, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advance cards. Um, and then they released the fast boot patch, which allows you to start the console up really fast. And it works. Um, so that's good. I wish they would just allow an option at least to get rid of that stupid splash screen. It takes forever to, to load and, I don't know, I just... Or just maybe make something that looks a little more on the retro side. <laughs> Doesn't look like a friggin'... It looks a little too... I'm trying to think of the word. It doesn't quite look like a video game thing. It just looks a little too more too much on the professional side maybe. like More like it's for something else. <laughs> Um, I would like to see something that at least looks a little more like a, a simple, that looks more like a gaming thing. Just a simple, like, maybe the logo, Refron 5, without all these animations. But, uh, that's that. Um, there's something that I was thinking of that I'd like to see. Oh, when you, the, the fast, uh, when you try to load the cars fast, or anything. I don't want to see loading screens. If you can... If they could take down the loading screens um, for the carts, it's just so that it's so minimal that you don't even, you know, it's not even really an issue. I would like them to just get rid of the loading screens. Just forget the loading screens. It's just, they're, they're, they're there, and you don't want to see, like, I don't want to see loading screens when I'm popping in a cart, even if I know what, the, you know, I know what they do. I know they're dumping the ROM in there, but I want them to make it feel like it's it's playing straight from the card, even if I know it's not. Um, and the loading screens don't help that. I would like them to just make it solo. I mean, if you're um, playing a game, if you pop in a game, and the loading screens are going to take forever, then I understand the loading screens being there, because you may be like, is it done yet? Is it done yet? But if it's going to be so fast that, it, you know, sometimes the loading screens, you don't wouldn't need that, because it's going to... You know, I like this. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm talking too fast, and uh, I have nothing to say. I, here's what I'd like to see, though. You pop the game in. It says, you know, it normally says no card on the screen, and it just fades out slowly and fades in and tells you what card you have instead of having a loading screen. That is, it's a reminder that it is dumping the ROM, and I don't want to see it. I just want to see it like fade out slowly and fade in with the uh, name of the game. Um, it would be a lot uh, better to me. Um, and if the loading screens are, or the loading times are that short, then I wouldn't be sitting there going, wondering when the game is going to load, because I know it's going to load fairly fast. So, whatever. I'm trying to make sense of that, but... Yeah, so, so far every game that I own, uh, including games that I've purchased since I actually bought this, all work. They all work fine. I saw one bug in Sonic 2 that was like a very minimal bug. I haven't seen it since. I don't know if they fixed that. It was so minimal that it's hard to notice. You have to look for it, but... Somebody pointed it out in a video, and it was actually worse, but uh, I, I didn't have it that bad. But I have not seen that since. Uh, so Sonic 2 had that bug. <laughs> One thing that's really awesome about this is when you put your carts in, you know, obviously it's running through emulation, but you pop your cart in, 
you're done, you go back to the menu, and then it saves where you left off, and you come back straight from there, which is cool. I remember a story my, my friend told me about how he was playing um, Tecmo Super Bowl for the NES. <laughs> he, had, he had left his, uh, his NES on, like, he was trying to play, and he, was, he left his NES on, like, all friggin' week or something, trying to finish everything or whatever. And his mom came by, and I think she, she was vacuuming or something. She was vacuuming the whole house, and she came into his room, tried to vacuum his room, and unplugged his, his NES. Meanwhile, I am, I'm just trying to play my game. <laughs> He's trying to play his games while she's sitting there vacuuming, busting her ass, cleaning the room that he was supposed to clean. Anyways. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he panicked and fre freaked out because uh, he lost all his progress. But, you know, you could uh, now pop that game in, play it, turn it off, and just keep going. And that's cool. I don't have to play, replace the 72 pin connector. Um, all my cl games have been cleaned thoroughly, very thoroughly. Some of them even uh, taken apart and cleaned with Brasso and stuff like that. So there, yeah, there have been no issues there. Um, yeah, so whatever. Uh, there is no support still for the, um, Super Game Boy. Um, you can play Game Boy games in the front of the console, but I think some people would, would, wanted some of the options from the game, Super Game Boy, like, uh, borders and things like that. I, it would be nice if they added that to the front. Uh, my experience with cheats has been alright. Um, a lot of cheats are really fun. I've never really used cheats, but with this I do. Um, and unfortunately not, not every cheat works right, but when they do, it's a lot of fun to fool around with. Um, so yeah, and the, the game genie still doesn't work, but like a lot of people say, I mean, you could use these cheats and they're like game genie cheat stuff, whatever, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but yeah, if you did purchase the game genie, um, Part there, you kind of can't use it. That's the only downside. You think you bought something, you can't use it. <laughs> um, and of course, there's no workaround for Duck Hunt uh, or Light Gun games. Um, I don't have a CRT. Well, the only workaround I've heard is that if you have like a um, an HD CRT TV that has HDMI in, you should be able to use it. But other than that, um, you can't really do that. You can't really, yeah. <laughs> so, hmm. everything else, everything else, everything else. I think that's really it. Uh, I really wish this console would actually support 1080p. I think that would be kind of cool. 1080p television. And that would be nice. But, as a whole, um, this thing has definitely gotten a lot better. Just looking at, uh, the internals of the Game Boy slot here, the Game Boy Advance. So then there's a little... Looks like a bit of a mechanism, I wonder. Whatever, who cares. Um, but, yeah, like I said, as a whole, this console has been very awesome. Um, got a lot of use out of it. It's a hell of a lot better than having to break out my old consoles every single time I want to play like an old game on, you know, like the original game. So if I want to play my carts, um, I can still play my carts and I don't have to break out old consoles and hook them up to the TV or use just ROMs with emulators. I can use uh, this with the cartridges that I have and hook them up to my HDTV, have them look nice. I don't have a CRT, so... This is a nice little compact, neat way of, well, keeping things neat and uh, being able to play your cartridges that you have um, already. And not having to break out old consoles to put them on the TV and have them look like shit on an HD television. So, and of course the other, the other method, of course, is if you don't give a shit about having the cartridges uh, there and you perfectly happy with ROMs and you want to go for a cheap route to get, you know, old 
2D games on your television, like Genesis, SNES, or whatever is in here, you can go with the Ouya. That, that's perfectly fine. Um, I have one. It's got the entire ROM set uh, in the back of those console. So there are adapters so you can use these old controllers. There's also adapters. I don't know how hard to find... Oh, God, I'm going to break it. I don't know how hard it is to find um, these other adapters called Retroads now because they stopped making them. But they will... Why am I pointing at this? This has nothing to do with the Ouya. Um, you can get these little adapters for cartridges that you plug the cartridges in and play them through the emulators on uh, Ouya. And, uh, but they don't... There's no support for NES. So. No NES. Just, uh, but you do get N64 for that if you can find the adapters. There's only... It comes with two ports, though. It's Genesis and SNES. And then you can get adapters for like Master System or um, what is it? Game Boy, things like that. There's just a little thing with Game Boy and there's uh, N64. It's not a lot really, but N64 is a big one though. That's a big plus over the Retron, you know. But it's a, I think it's a lot more money. <laughs> a lot more money to get that set up. Um, so then you need all these adapters and all this other shit, so. However, one plus, of course, with the Ouya is that, you know, you, it doesn't just play old games. It does more than just that. It can be a media center and play your, your video files and all that stuff, music and all that. Because it's Android. So. But all in all, as a whole, if you're looking for it the, for the reasons that I was or for any other reason, this is a great system. Um, I want to give it a 10 out of, I would want to give it a 10 out of 10 just because I like it so much, but because it still is um, not perfect, that doesn't make any sense. So I'd have to give it an 8 out of 10 just because, well, it's awesome and it does still have flaws, but um, it's definitely the best clone console I've ever used in my life. Um, both clone consoles, they, well, they clone the original hardware, but uh, they don't use emulation. But I really was hoping they would use emulation because the cloning of the original hardware normally sucks. And, yeah, this does not, this plays everything properly, and it looks nice on my HD television, and it does have the filters and everything if you want them. And, uh, yeah, so... And they're working on it. The fact that they can update it is actually a good thing. Um, so a lot of times you think, well, they're just going to push things out, they're going to make it shit, and then they're going to uh, rely on updates to fix it. Um, and yeah, it may be true, but the thing is, with the older versions of this, they pushed it out, it was unfinished shit, and they couldn't fix it. So at least if they pushed this out, it was kind of unfinished. I don't know that it was shit, but it was kind of unfinished. They can fix it over the internet. You can apply your updates and everything. So it's not like left as a pile of crap just because they left. They released it as a pile of crap. And that's how they handled their old consoles where like the Retron 3, I had it. It was a pile of crap and there was nothing you could do to fix that. At least with this, they can you can request fixes, and they can go, okay, there's enough people requesting this fix. Let's make it true, and they can actually fix it. So that's a good thing. <laughs> so in, in all in all, the fact that they can update this console is a, is a big plus. Because if it was like the Retron 3, it would have been left as a piece of shit, and that would have been it. So this is a great console. If you're looking into getting a clone console and you don't care that it's using emulation, um, definitely look at this. Especially if you want to go with an HD television. So, thank you for watching. That was that. And, yeah. There you go. Thanks for watching.